So the other day I was stumped. I was trying to composite a wrestling poster and I just couldn't come up with anything creative for a background. So I was surfing around on the internet and I ended up trolling around on some internet forums looking for some inspiration. And when I was on the forums, I kept seeing this question pop up where people were asking how to photograph wrestling. And the responses were very wide ranging. Some people gave some very good advice and some people gave some very bad advice. And it was kind of comical to me because as I read some of these responses, people would give this big long dissertation on how to photograph wrestling, but at the end they would say, but I've never shot wrestling. And I'm sure that probably some of them were very good photographers and they were very well intentioned and even if you're not experienced in a specific aspect of photography, if you're an experienced photographer, you can usually walk in and do fairly well. But some of these people were just giving bad advice in my opinion. So I decided to put this little video together to give you guys some tips on how I shoot wrestling. Now wrestling is a very unique sport because in a lot of sports you can't get very close to the action and a lot of sports you have to use a very fast shutter speed to try to stop the motion of the action because in football or basketball the athletes are constantly running. There's not a lot of static movement within the sport but wrestling's different. You have a very fast takedown and then you have some very slow action when they're on the ground or when they're even before the takedown occurs when they're slowly circling each other. So that gives you a lot of creative options as far as what kind of lenses to use because you can be close to the action and also as far as your shutter speed because some of the action is not very fast moving and that also gives you options as far as what kind of aperture setting to use. So let's start off by talking about what all photographers love to talk about camera gear. Now because most of these events take place in poorly lit gyms, if you have access to a full frame camera, I recommend using a full frame camera because it will give you cleaner images at high ISOs. But if you don't have a full frame camera, it's okay, you can still get some great images with the crop sensor camera. As far as lens selection goes, you don't have to have a super long telephoto lens to shoot wrestling because you can usually get down on the mat and you're fairly close to the action. My default recommendation for anybody who wants to get involved in sports photography or any kind of photography in general, a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens is a very versatile lens that you can do a lot with. And I think it's a great focal length for shooting wrestling and at f2.8 it allows a lot of light to get back to your camera and you can get some great images. But even more than a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, I like to use prime lenses when I shoot wrestling. And the reason is because since you can get closer to the action, you don't have to have that long focal length. So anything from about 85 to 135 millimeters, in my opinion, is a very good focal length for shooting wrestling. And by getting those prime lenses, you can get a wider aperture than the f2.8 that you would get with a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens. And by having that wider aperture, it allows more light back to your camera sensor, which will allow you to either drop your ISO and get cleaner images or speed up your shutter speed and make sure you don't get any kind of motion blur in your images. I've personally been using the Canon 135mm f2 lens a lot lately to shoot wrestling and I really like it. But anything in that kind of 85 to 135 millimeter focal range works really well. I've noticed when I use my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, I'm typically somewhere around 120 to 150 millimeters for most of my shots. So 135 millimeters for me works really well. And if I have to crop them a little bit with that prime lens, it's so sharp, I don't mind having to crop. Now, one of the problems with wrestling is you've got a square mat with a circle in the middle of it. And the wrestlers circle around each other and you never know what direction they will be facing when the action happens. You also don't know where the referee is gonna be when that spectacular takedown or reversal occurred. Now that's different from pretty much every other sport. In football or soccer, you know one team has to go in one direction to score and the other team has to go in the other direction. So it kind of gives you an idea of where to set up to get your shots. You also, after a while, you get to know the referees and you know where certain referees like to stand and you know that certain referees have to be in certain parts of the field and it allows you to plan ahead so that that referee is not in your shot. With wrestling, you don't have those kind of options. Now, when I was on the forums, I saw people saying that they like to move around a lot during a wrestling match to get the various shots that they want. 
I personally don't move very much. I pretty much pick a spot and yeah, I may move three or four feet to either side if the referee's in the way or something along those lines, but I don't move around too much because typically at a wrestling tournament or even a dual meet, you're gonna have spectators on the side, you're gonna have a scoring table, you're gonna have coaches, and I am i don't like to block other people's view. My goal as a photographer at an event is to be as invisible as possible, so I don't walk around pretty much. I pick my spot and hopefully the action occurs in such a way that I can get a great shot. Now for me, the perfect wrestling shot is the image of a wrestler going in for a takedown. He's got the other guy's leg or both legs, his head's tucked in close to the body, but he's looking up in my direction and I get a clean shot of his face during the takedown. The problem is since you never know which direction that wrestler is gonna be facing when that takedown occurs, you may end up with a shot of their back. And that's just something that you're gonna to have to deal with. You're just gonna to have to be prepared for when those peak moments of action occur that you can capture the great shot. Now, with most sports photography, you want to have a really fast shutter speed because you want to make sure you stop that action. But with wrestling, a lot of the action is very static. You've got the wrestlers slowly circling each other. They might come in and tie up up top for a little while. And then you've got a really fast takedown, and then they're on the ground. And again, there's not a lot of movement once they're on the ground, usually. So that gives you an option to slow your shutter speed down. I was looking on Flickr the other day, and I saw some images from this photographer who shoots... Uh, Division One college wrestling, and I noticed some of his images, or a lot of his images, were shot at 1 one sixtieth of a second, and they were just super good images, really clean, sharp images. Now, the only problem with slowing your shutter speed down, at least for me, every single time I've slowed my shutter speed down when the action was down on the ground, somebody scrambled out of whatever was taking place, and then an awesome takedown occurred, and at 1 one sixtieth of a second, my shutter was so slow, that I just ended up with a blurry image. So for me, I want the takedown, the shot of the takedown more than anything else that occurs in that match. So I don't really tend to slow my shutter speed down a lot. I usually try to keep it at, at, at least 1 400th of a second, and if I can go higher, I do. And I just kind of deal with the fact that the images where the action is a little bit slower moving is gonna be a little bit more noisy than I would like. The other thing that I've kind of begun to do lately is I carry a second camera body and I'll have one camera body set up with a faster shutter speed and a higher ISO and the other camera body with a slower shutter speed and a lower ISO to give me clean images when the action's static. That way if something does happen I can just grab the other camera and start shooting rather than trying to make adjustments to my camera settings. But I know not everybody's going to have access to two DSLRs to be able to do that so when I'm only shooting with one camera, I keep my shutter speed high. That's just a personal preference on how I do it. Now, one of the other things that I saw when I was on the forums was I saw people over and over saying, don't use flash when you shoot wrestling. It will distract the wrestlers. Well, I'm here to tell you, I shoot at a lot of wrestling events on a lot of different talent levels and age groups from youth groups all the way up to high school level. And I use flash at almost every event I go to. I've never once had it be a problem. Now what I typically do is I'll go to the tournament director or the referee for the match and I'll just ask them if they have a problem with me shooting flash and they universally always told me it's not a problem. And I've even taken it a step further and I've talked to some of the wrestlers after their match and asked them if the flash bothered them and they've always given me the same answer. They didn't even notice that I was using a flash during their match. The athletes are focused on one another. They're not concerned about your flash. It's a complete non-issue. I like to use flash because it fills in the shadows and it just really helps to keep the images really sharp and crisp. I can use a faster shutter speed to make sure I freeze that action. But I don't use flash for the entire match. And the reason is simple. With a flash mounted in your hot shoe, the recycle time just takes too long. So. I don't have any hard and fast rules for when I use flash, but typically what I'll do is I'll use flash for a couple of shots at the very beginning of a match so that I can make sure that I get some really crisp images where the face is you know, well lit and no shadows and sharp, and then I'll turn the flash off and I'll focus on shooting in a continuous mode so that when that great takedown occurs, I'm prepared to capture that image. 
but it's just something that I mix up and vary. There's no set guidelines for when I use flash and when I don't use flash. One of the biggest nightmares for shooting wrestling, especially tournament wrestling, is white balance in these and also your exposure, excuse me. When you shoot in these gyms and there's a large tournament and they have multiple mats, a lot of times the mats end up being different colors because the school simply doesn't have enough mats that are all the same color so they end up using practice mats and things like that. And as a photographer we know two things. Different surfaces, different colored surfaces are going to re reflect a different color of light and also different colors reflect different amounts of light. So for example I shot at a wrestling tournament last week and one of the mats was blue and yellow and another mat that they had tucked up in the corner was a dark red. Well also up in the corner of this gym the lights did not extend all the way to the end of the mat. They only came out to the first part of the mat. On the dark red mat the images were coming out about a third of a stop underexposed and they were also coming out with a red tint to the images. On the yellow mat, which was reflecting more light and was also in the center of the gym floor with more overhead lights, it was casting a yellow color cast into the images. Now, for me, when I shoot a tournament, I'm going to shoot 500 to 1,000 images at that tournament. I don't have time to sit there and go through and individually color correct all of the images. I also don't have the ability to shoot with a custom white balance on each mat because I may be shooting on one mat and then quickly going to another mat and back and forth during a tournament. So the way that I deal with that problem is I will take all of the images from let's say the red colored mat, put them in a folder on light, in Lightroom, take all of the images from the yellow colored mat, put them in a separate folder, and then I will make a global adjustment to each of those. What I found that works best in most of these tournament situations is I'll use the color picker and since referees in wrestling tend to wear a gray and black striped uniform, I'll usually just pick a spot on their gray uniform to set the custom white balance in Lightroom on each different color mat. There's a lot of different options in Lightroom to make color corrections, but for me I found that tends to be a little bit more accurate than using the auto or fluorescent settings in Lightroom. So hopefully those tips help you out. If you guys have any other ideas on how to shoot wrestling, I would love to hear them because I'm always looking for new ways to approach my photography. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.